Welcome to the Private Property Podcast. My name is Mbalin Walker, and this is the Farming Podcast. And I'm your host this evening, just like every other week onto the show. Thank you so much for joining us on the show and supporting us continuously week after week. We're reaching close to the 70th episode, and it's just been a fantastic journey to have you on board, to you at home and all the guests that have joined us this evening. I'm excited about our conversation today because we have a lovely guest. Um, I I was privileged enough to share the stage with her at a recent women's seminar and um, just sitting in the audience, she inspired me and um, pretty much it's all about her philosophy and her vision for starting her vegetable gardening farm. But most importantly, she's engrossed herself in a community that um, not only spans from adults, but right down to youth and young individuals. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing to you uh, Mandi Maifadi, who's the Managing Director of Naledi Farm. They're based in Centurion, and tonight we're going to hear all about her story, and most importantly, Naledi Farm. So if you have any questions for our guests this evening, please comment below. We're happy to take any questions, any comments, any uh, uh, inquiries that you might have based on my conversation with Mandi this evening, and continue to like, share, and share, and share this video. You'll catch us on YouTube, post this interview if you missed any parts but please would love to engage with you in our live conversation let's welcome our guest this evening Monty how are you doing and thank you so much for joining the private property farming podcast thank you thank you so much Mbani, for having me I am honored honored to be here today <laughs> thank you so much Great. I think it's great to have you on today, most importantly, because a lot of people um, aspire to start farms. And, you know, the first point of reference where they start is actually in their backyard. And I like the concept um, that you've created around Naledi Farm, vegetable gardening. Firstly, tell mm -hmm. us about who is Mandi Maifadi before Naledi Farm and what inspired the dream or vision behind Naledi Farm? Sure. Okay. I'm thinking, where do I start? I'm a mother of three. Um, the eldest is now 15. The youngest is, how old is Nali? He's, he's, he's 11 now. Um, I am my father's daughter. I followed my father everywhere. I grew up in Kwakwa. Kwakwa, which is in the Eastern Free State. Mbali, you won't believe up to this day that people who think Kwakwa is in Lesotho. Kwakwa is not in Lesotho, it's in the Eastern Free State. So that's where, okay. <laughs> that's where I was born. That's where I was raised. Those beautiful mountains, usually now in, in, in winter, we have snow you know, shaped, shaped me and running around, following my father, especially in the garden. Um, and those are the earliest memories I have of myself. I mean, mm -hmm. I think I was about eight years when I learned about nastasias. You know, those are edible flowers that you you find now, you know, people growing. But I was only eight years when I learned that these are nastasias. And if this is from my upbringing, following my father around everywhere in those beautiful mountains of Kwakwa. Mm -hmm. that's, that's me. Um, then I went on to study botany and zoology um, up to master's level. I worked in the public health uh, sector for 10, I think 14, 14 years. And yeah, but I've always you know, loved working with my hands. I've always loved uh, working with the soil and being out in nature. That is, that is just me. Wow, so what inspired the dream and vision behind Naledi Farm when you started in 2017? Sure. Okay. So the dream, Naledi Farm, is, it, it was inspired by a children's book. There's a book that I wrote in 2010 when I was expecting Naledi. I say he's our youngest, our, our last, but my, my, my husband always corrects me and says he's our, our youngest. So yes. Naledi, <laughs> I was expecting him in 2010 and I started to put together a book for him, right? It's a book written in Sesotho with beautiful, colorful illustrations uh, to inspire the African child. Because my thinking was, if I don't write for my child, uh, who will? Because you go to any, I mean, at that time, you would go to bookstores and you would not find anything written in Sesotho 
or in Isi Zulu, or any of our African languages. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to and would uh, ended up publishing this book in in I think it was in 2012 when we then self. Then from that book, we self-published um, The Dream Grew Bigger. When to give this book, like sort of like a 3D form, you know, if you're thinking maybe Walt Disney. So we've had, we've always had these crazy ideas, my husband and I. So we wanted our children and their parents to Um, then we started searching for land. You know, mm. That's how that's how uh, a lady farm came into being. We started looking for land, and in 2015, we found ourselves a beautiful and that's where when we arrived, we said, "Yes, this is the home of a lady. This is a lady farm." So that's what inspired. Yeah. Lovely. So what size of land is Naledi Farm operating on and what, what, is, uh, what, what services does Naledi Farm provide? Place. Um, at first, when we moved in, I mean, it, it, it felt very, very big. I remember we are used to living in small spaces. We felt like it was really so, so overwhelming. Um, one of the first things that we did, though, when we got to the farm, uh, this and that, but we're not eating cement and bricks. So let's start our vegetable patch, which is why I believe we have some connectivity issues with Mandy uh, on her side. Uh, we'll just try to uh, contact her on the side and just see if she could reconnect. Okay, now we are ready to open our, our home. It's really our home for guests. Um, and I remember that yeah, I Hi, Mandy, can you hear me properly? Hi, Monty, can you hear me properly? I think we can just go to a short ad break. Uh, let's just try to reconnect with Monty because I think she's got a wealth of information and very valuable for um, everybody at home this evening. So um, if you just could give us a few seconds and we'll just try and reconnect with Monty and have her back onto the show.
Apologies for that. We have Monty back onto the show. If it's not internet connectivity, it is load shedding. But nothing could stop the farming podcast from continuing. Monty, um, I just have to repeat that question again because you obviously got disconnected mm. there. But um, what I was asking is that how big of land is uh, Naledi Farm operating on and what service are you currently providing on your farm? We are on a three hectare. It's a three hectare piece of land. But as I was saying, one of the first things that we did when we got there was to, to, to set up a vegetable garden. All yes. activities, believe you me, in Bali are centered around that vegetable garden. So we moved in in 2015. We started with you know, renovations, but the garden had to begin. Had to, we have to have a garden immediately. And uh, two years later, in 2017, we decided that now we were ready you know, to open up our home for guests. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a garden. I mean, we had lots and lots of food that we could share uh, with guests. And we thought, okay, why not use the food that we have in the garden and you know, sit on long tables with our guests, but also invite somebody who can come and share their life's journey. That's how the harvest table, that is our flagship, um, 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 what do you call it? Mm -hmm. uh, Flagship. One of the first things that we did. Yes. Yes. The harvest table. Mm -hmm. From the har harvest in the sense that we're going to the garden to harvest, you know, um, seasonal veggies, whatever it is that we had at the time, a celebration, you know, of, of the hard work. and But also a harvest in the sense of the knowledge that a speaker would come and bring. And that's how the harvest table was born. Um, mm -hmm. And that's how we, we started. We started it with, in our living room. You know, we hired chairs, plastic chairs, and those, you know, those tables must there is some yeah. when we peel at funerals. Yeah, yeah. We would hire those and cover them with tablecloths, but it, it would just be a beautiful and, and you know, day with family and just sharing and, and breaking bread. And that, oh. all the other, you know, um, serve, um, um, servings that we have now, you know, were born from the harvest table. You know, from them people wanted, can I come and host a baby shower? Can we come and host a, a birthday party? And that's and that's how we grew. Um, we we then um, went on to introduce the children's corner, which is one of my favorites because we're thinking, let us start them young. So we have children's camps. Pity now it's COVID, we, we can't have those. But when we have camps, children come. We spend a whole entire weekend with them. And the main aim is to encourage children to work with their hands, right? To, to be independent and to be able to grow their own food, you know? Um, so we, we, we teach them all sorts of things. We also have day activities for them where they could just come for a couple of hours. And, and we had one, I think about a month ago, where, where we were talking about leaves and photosynthesis. Right. So making those abstract things that they learn in school practical, practical and, and very easy for them to understand, giving them practical hands on examples. And so if we have quite a varied number of, 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 of services, but the children's one. Yes. And recently now we started with 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 the um, what can I call it? The, the revolution of the home guard. Uh, let's call it the revolution of the home garden. That's what we are really, really working on currently. So maybe let's deep dive into that revolution of the home garden. What does involve? What does it involve? Yeah, you know, you. I mean, you'll know, Mbali, that all of us, you know, we grew up with a vegetable garden at home. You know, yeah. but I guess because of you know our move to the cities, our busy lives, and you know. Uh, we have sort of, we, we, some of us don't have the time to do, you know, to have vegetable gardens. Some of us don't have the space. So we are going into that gap to help, you know, us remember how to grow our own food because it's, it's what we know. I mean, our, our parents have been growing food, you know, since, since forever. So we're saying we are here to help families and people to remember how to, their, to grow their own food. We started this thing in... I think it was last year when COVID started. Mm. Yeah, I think that's when we started. We, we, our, our, our motto is no space is too small. You know, yes. Even if you have a corner somewhere where the sun shines, mm. you are able to grow 
something. Right. So, so you I'm go out to your... Yes. Yeah, carry on. I was actually going to ask, I'm saying, say, if, if, so if I understand correctly, are you revolutionizing people's home gardens so that they could grow their own vegetable gardens themselves? Absolutely. Grow your own food. Because, I mean, the, the food system, you'll know when I'm by, it's about trust, right? You mm. have to trust the farmer that, that grows the food for you. You have to trust the, 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 the van that, that transports it from the farm mm. to the grocer, to the market. You have to trust the grocery store that sells, that perhaps saves it in the fridges, that they have your best interest at heart, mm. right? But, uh, you know, we don't because we have to make profits. So we sometimes, you're not really, really sure. But yes. if you grow your own food, you know exactly what has gone into the into, into, into If you put a plate of food in front of your child, you know exactly what has gone into the soil. Because, mm. I mean, you, you, you grew it yourself. So mm. that's, that's, that's what we're saying. So we'll go into your home and we'll help you with whatever space you have, whatever time you know you have to set to help you set up a vegetable garden yeah so going into a lady farm and how you started your vegetable garden how did you come about to mm. this to say um firstly i'm going to start growing vegetables and what type of mm. vegetables did you start to uh to plant or grow mm. Well, with me, I guess it was easy because I've, I've, I mean, I, I come from a family of my, of, of, of growers. Of yes. my, my grandmother, who I'm named after, you know, grew food. Her home was just a paradise of fruit and veggies. And, you, I mean, we would never like anything. But I would say for somebody who's beginning, who wants to start, mm. right, you can never go wrong with green beans, right? In, in the summer now, when the, when the, when the winter, when, when spring starts, think August, September, green beans, they're very, very quick to germinate. Within five days, you already feel like you're a farmer. You feel like you're a gardener because those little heads would already have popped out of the ground, right? Yes. So your green beans, your spinach, your tomatoes, those you can't go wrong with. Mm -hmm. Then you grow into it, right? You, you, you learn your soil, you learn the sun patterns, you learn about your climate, but you grow into it and your confidence grows and you can start beginning to introduce other things like your chili and your, um, what other things, uh, potatoes and, and, and sweet potatoes. But we say, start with those basics, start with, you know, things that you use on a daily basis. Tomato can go wrong, spinach, beans, and if you have space, pumpkin is also a very easy, a, a, something, to, a, something very easy to grow mm -hmm. uh, if you have space for it. But start small, lend your soil, um, have interest, you know, look at what sort of birds, what sort of animals are visiting my space. And with time, you grow into it and, and you become confident in it. Mm, mm. Yeah. And, and, and I remember when we uh, were at that women's seminar, you shared mm. a very, very important philosophy um, that, uh, that in a lady farm is centered around, which is um, a farm or, 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 or a vegetable garden that is pesticide free. And for people that want to start their own vegetable gardens, and sometimes are sharing pictures to say, you know, the birds ate my spinach, or I'm, yes. I'm seeing a funny worm eating my spinach. How can people manage uh, their own production, uh, considering the fact that they didn't study botany just like you, they didn't study yes. agriculture just made like other people? How can mm. they just manage and ensure that they can successfully grow their own food, having managed pesticide free their crops um, to exceed expectations. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll go again to say start small, right? Yeah. Start small, start with what, what you can manage and, 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 and just learn your environment, right? What we do is that we, we, we plant a whole, we, we don't just plant like one big um, batch of cabbages or batch of spinaches. We plant yeah. a whole variety of things. You know, we try and mimic nature. You know that there is diversity in nature. I mean, if you go to a forest right now, you'll find that there are tall trees, there is grass, there are vines. You know, there is interest and diversity 
And our gardens are exactly like that. So we mm. plant herbs with spinach, we plant flowers and onions, everything together. Like I said in the seminar, we confuse the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. So that, you know, those little hokakis, when they smell that uh, smell of garlic, it's like, uh -uh, I'm not going next, next to that garlic, and, but that garlic is growing next to a spinach. So plants help each other in that way. Um, so that is what we call companion planting, where plants help each other, you know, um, some give shade, you know, like if you're planting, you know, the three sisters, you know, you have your millis, right, which are tall, you have your beans, and then they use the millis to go up, okay, as stakes, right, and then you have your pumpkin at the floor, and then the millis are, are providing shade for for your for your um, um, pumpkins so that is what we call companion planting using plants to help each other yeah. uh, to grow and, and to thrive but it, it, it takes it takes it takes practice right it's not something that you can learn overnight it takes practice and if you're unsure you ask questions I mean we have a lot of elders who know these things you go to your grandparents and you ask them, how do I do this without getting um, putting in pesticides in my food? How do I get, I mean, I always go to my grandfather. He tells me um, there's a very good uh, concoction of garlic, um, marigold, I don't know if you know marigold, it's a flower, chili, it's like a very potent uh, spray that you can just spray on your spinach just to deter, deter insects, you know, that would, yeah, yeah. Wow, so can I just repeat that? It's mar marigold, so marigold, yeah, you remember marigolds, those, those yellow flowers, they don't have a nice smell. Yeah. Yes, potent. a pungent smell, yeah. Yes, and then some chili. Just think of anything potent that you can put in there. Chili, and then you put garlic, right? And then you let them sit for at least 24 hours, and you just spray. Um, and, but of course, there'll be a, a bite here and there. But I also yes. I always say that that assures you that these things are safe. If they can, be, if 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 they're safe for the whole hike, it means they're safe for me. For you. And at <laughs> least if you're growing it directly, you know what has gone into that food. You know exactly. You see the progress from seed to to um, to flowering to now getting a full leaf or a full pumpkin, and you know it's pretty much safe for you to consume because you were involved in every step of the way of the production. But, Absolutely. Um, Mandy, you know, one thing that I always emphasize on the, the farming podcast is that as much as we might have mm -hmm. uh, individuals like yourselves uh, mm -hmm. who are running vegetable gardens and have, you know, developed a passion into a business, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, whether it's a vegetable garden or a farm that we're running, it mm -hmm. is a business at the end of the day. And so, um, you know, at the start of our conversation, you mentioned these are tough times. And I just want you mm -hmm. to share um, how the business, Now Lady Farm, has been disrupted by, mm -hmm. um, you know, COVID-19 um, restrictions, mm -hmm. lockdown measures. I mean, mm -hmm. this, this concept of the... The harvest table, it sounds yeah. phenomenal, you know, to be outdoors in a different mm. environment and just talk with maybe mm. strangers or group of friends about life, problems, mm. opportunities, great things that have happened in our life. Mm. Again, eating food that is grown by you, for example. Mm. Um, that is such a wonderful concept. And I think during now COVID, people wish to be outdoors because yeah. we've been up in our small spaces for far too long. Mm. So how has you know, the, 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 the pandemic maybe just disrupted your business. Mm. Yes. Yo, it has yo, disrupted us in a very big way. Remember, we're an agri-tourism destination. So our, our, our business is really, really reliant on, on, on guests coming to visit us. Mm. So if guests are not able to come to visit, it means we don't have business. Right. I mean, the, the last year was really, really tough. You may remember last year we had a very hard lockdown. So we had absolutely, absolutely no income. Uh, and that's when we started the vegetable garden drive revolution, at least in that way we, where we would be able to go to people's home without interacting with them. We were just outside. We were minding our own business. We set up your garden and we leave, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, just to stay afloat and to be able to keep the stuff you know that 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 we have on the farm but it has really really been tough to even now i mean people are not 
we are not you know fully confident you know to to go out and and and, and socialize so it's it's really 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 tough um Mm-hmm. But we are grateful because we have the large open space. You know, when you come to visit us, we are not. Most of our activities are held outside, and mm-hmm. um, we are fortunate that we have we have that. But we mm-hmm. we, we push on. What Absolutely, we? we do. We have to push on. You mentioned that you've got three children. How involved are they in the vegetable oh. garden? I mean, in the vegetable garden, and it is Youth Month, just by the way. Yes, so, yes, how yes, have yes, you, yes. as a mother, uh, maybe just as partners, yourself and your husband, pulled mm. the children into mm. this vegetable garden because it's so important that mm. the youth know and understand where they uh, where their food comes from. Mm. Well, they're not only in, involved in the vegetable garden; they're involved in, in the business as a whole. You know, we, we 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 try and integrate everything. You know, them into everything that we do. Yes. Beginning yes. of the year, we sit as a family. You know, uh, the five of us, and we have a um, um, a boss berat, a strat plan. And you'll be amazed at the, you know, great ideas they come up with for the business. You know, wow. they are, they're really, really hands on. And my daughter, Lesejo, um, is a great cook. She, she's, she does hospitality at school. The desserts that we serve on the farm um, um, are made by her. Lesejo is very good with children. He, he, he just has this warm, warm personality. So that's where he fits in. Naledi is the one who welcomes guests. So they are really, really involved. You know, on a, on a, like we have Sunday lunches. Um, every Sunday, on if you come on that day, <laughs> you'll see how everybody just goes to their corner to make you know the day a success. And after all is done and the guests have left, we sit together as a family again, just to debrief. And you'll, you 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 just get you know goosebumps listening yeah. to the things that they're able to see as 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 small as they are, you know, and to say, Mama, but here. Let's not do this, but let's do that. So they are really, really, really involved. And we think it's, it's important because we want them to own a uh, Naledi farm, right? Mm-hmm. So that they can sustain it and, and, and move it and move with it and, and, grow, and grow with it. That is phenomenal, Mandy. Yeah. Just to yeah. run down or sum, sum up uh, Naledi's farm's service offerings, and please uh, feel free to add yes. more. So you've spoken about the harvest table. You've spoken yes. about the children tours uh, that you guys have. Um, yes. And also the revolutionizing other people's home gardens. Yes. Is, are those the three main uh, services that you have within our lady farm or are yes. there more? And if so please there tell are us. More. Yeah. So we also have Sunday lunches, um, which um, every Sunday we cook and guests come, uh, they book and we sit outside and have... Um, a lovely meal from the garden. In fact, this very Sunday we're having a, a father, father, um, Father's Day event for fathers and, and their children. We oh. also have uh, cooking demos where we'd invite a chef who shares the same values, right? And those are meant to be educational where we go into the garden and we uh, pick whatever it is that we pick and we go to cook together in the kitchen, you know, bringing those beautiful plants of ours, Bolingana, Mthonyani, Mbepo, bringing them back on, onto the table. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. We have a question here, Manti, from one of our viewers, uh, Jacob Molekwa. Uh, he asks, what are the requirements to register a company for mixed vegetable farming? Sure. I, I don't know how to answer that one. <laughs> I think he just answered his own question because this is one yeah. of the to register a company. Yes. Uh, mixed vegetable farming. So I believe that even if you want to do mixed vegetable farming, um, and you want to run it into a business, you have to register mm. it as a company, whether it's yes. a PCY LTD or yes. uh, for non-profit. Uh, but I think that information he could find out from the CIPC um, mm. pretty much to be correct. Um, mm. Yeah. And so if I understand, so it's you, now Lady Farm is run by yourself, your husband and the three children. And, three and what, is the, what is the future vision for, for now Lady Farm? Sure. We, in, in the short term, um, I think in the, in the next five years, we, we pray that we, 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 we get accommodation because of a lot of our guests 
mm. you know, saying, you know, we don't want to leave this place. Do you have room <laughs> for us to sleep? Yeah. Currently, um, you know, currently we, we, we offer tenting a type of accommodation where people can set up tents, but we hope to be able to, to have accommodation. I think that's, that's in, the, in, the, in the short term. Yes, yes. In, in the that is five, lovely. Yes. yes, that is lovely. So literally, Naledi Farm has grown from you moving into a plot, um, you know, in a peri-urban area, farming your vegetables, and then mm. teaching the community, and most importantly, making it interactive and an agritourism yes. space. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think this has just been such a phenomenal growth in just plus minus four five years. Yeah, you know, I sometimes want to pinch myself, like like from that book, that uh, yeah. ten page book, and this is how we have grown. It's 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 phenomenal. It's 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 really it, it just shows you what is possible if you if you work hard. I mean, that's number yeah. one. Work hard. Yes, you must work hard, and and we are really really blessed. We have support of of you know the universe is just coming and supporting us and we have strangers coming to support us but making that first step that's the key thing make that first step and you just open a whole world of of amazing amazing things yeah it's it's, it's unbelievable yeah, well, Mandy, I'm so proud of your success and just as a woman, just doing it. Um, and most importantly, just impacting the lives of others, you know, because it seems like as much as Naledi Farm has become an, uh, a preferred agritourist agri space, you've also touched a lot of lives and impacted a lot of lives just on the work that you do and mm. the conversations, I presume, that, that are had at mm. that uh, harvest table. Mm. Um, I can almost just feel that energy within you, you know, yes. as people yes. are just able to sit here and be in a safe space. And it's evident if they don't want to go home, yes. <laughs> it's because they love the space that, that, that they're in and it's just therapeutic in some mm. sense. You know, I guess, or, uh, most of I guess, find themselves in this predicament. They'll say, you know, Mandy, we know that we, we are guests here at Na Lady Farm, but we also feel like we are family, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's like home away from home. It's like, you know, sitting on your grandmother's stoop and drinking tea. That is yeah. just the kind of, of space that, that we've been, been blessed with and been, have been able to, to, to create, yeah. Wow, thank you so much for oh, having this conversation with us. I think I need to take a turn at Naledi Farm, vice versa, and you come through and visit the yes. farm with myself. But I think, yeah, your space sounds so much more uh, relaxing um, and very, very like insightful in just terms of how we can feed ourselves at home. But just mm. to make sure people can catch on social media, on Instagram, yes. well, what other social media pages are they on? So can they catch on the website as well? So we are on Instagram and Facebook as Naledi Farm, right? And then also on our um, website, um, www.naledifarm. That, that's, that's where they can, they can get hold of us. Fantastic. So are you fully booked for Father's Day? You want, we have, <laughs> I'm actually very nervous about it. We are really, people are excited. We, we are booked. We are booked. We are booked. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. Lots of fun. We'll be cooking outside in the open fire. Fathers chopping wood and children chopping veggies. It's just going to be a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Wow. Well, I wish you the best of success for that afternoon and I hope it goes well and that fathers and children can connect with their, with themselves, with each other. But thank yes. you, Mandy, for, for your time this evening. I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Bali. Thank you for having me. And I'll definitely come and make a turn and see the work that you do. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. That was Mandy Mikefadi, uh, the managing director of Naledi Farm. They're based out in Centurion. And she's pretty much told us her life story on how Naledi Farm was birthed, the vision, the concept behind it. And most importantly, she just started as a normal vegetable farm to feed her family, but then found that she had excess produce and she needed to share it with a lot of people. And that's how uh, Naledi Farm pretty much converted into an agri-tourist spot where she's holding... Um, 
uh, harvest tables, uh, tours or excursions for young children to know where their food comes from and how to grow their food. And most importantly, just as adults in terms of how and where to grow your food in your own garden, no space is too small. And that's why she's also developed a service offering where she can transform your garden at home so that you could feed your own family. Uh, if you missed our conversation tonight, you'll find it on YouTube on our uh, uh, farming playlist under the Private Property channel. Most importantly, please catch Manti from Naledi Farm on their Instagram, Facebook, uh, uh, social media pages as, as Naledi Farm, as well as on their website, which is Naledi Farm. That's it from me this evening. Stay home, stay safe, and I will catch you next week, Tuesday at eight o'clock. Thank you. Good night.